Hello, recently I was building a hobby project and at some point I needed to let users log into the application. So I needed to add an authentication solution and I didn't really feel like adding device because it felt like a cumbersome uh, heavy solution to add to this uh, simple lightweight application. So I wanted to use a more simple authentication strategy and what came to my mind would was to use uh, magic link authentication. This is how it works. I would click some kind of login uh, uh, link and be redirected to a form where I need to input my email. So this is a form for a magic link uh, authentication. I would be able to input my email address and click send magic link. After this, I would receive an uh, email with a link to sign in. Here's the email, so the magic link, and uh, it says please confirm. And here is your link to sign in. It will expire in uh, an hour. And uh, this is the device that you used to sign in. So if I click this link, here I am, I am signed in. And I can see this user specific data. I can see my username. I see the logout button. So you see, all I did was input my email address, receive an email and log in. That's it. And this way you don't have to store passwords. And uh, this solution is as secure as your email account. But if somebody managed to break into your email account, I think you've got bigger problems to worry about. So we are going to implement this kind of magic link passwordless authentication in this episode. And we are not going to build it from zero. We are going to use a nice solution named passwordless. So it is a cool gem to add this kind of uh, magic link authentication. So let's add it to a new Rails application. Now here I've already generated a new Rails application and it has a list of posts. So uh, if I start the server, I have uh, I have created a new application and I can add posts. And I want to make it so that the uh, uh, posts are tied to users and uh, only a user who has well created the post can edit the post or delete this post. And only an authenticated user can create a post. So I would need to add current user and all this kind of authentication. So let's go through this gem. I will add the gem passwordless. So I will say um, bundle add passwordless. This way I don't have to manually add it to the gem file and run bundle because I uh, injected it into the gem file using this bundle add and it automatically uh, ran the bundle command. Now I can run the migrations for passwordless. Let's do this. So let's see this migration file that was just generated. I'm going to db migrate and here's this migration. So here we're going to skip all our authentication tokens. All these uh, kind of uh, magic link uh, uh, information. So we know uh, here is the magic link. The remote attributes uh, is uh, the IP address. This is the user agent, so uh, that it was like Mozilla, Macintosh, and so on. Uh, claimed at, timeout at, and expired at. So how long until uh, the authentication expires? How long until the token is made invalid? So quite uh, basic information that you will need to make these tokens valid and make them work. Okay, let's go further. We need to generate a current user. So we need a user table. And uh, in our user model, we will need only an email. Now remember, when you create uh, a device user, there will be a real lot of information. But here, well, we need just some kind of unique ID that is the email to which we are going to send uh, the authentication links. So we are going to generate a user model with an email. So here is the migration. We just need an email for the user. And you can also say null false. Well, you, you don't want to have a user without an email. Okay, now we will run the migrations, Rails DB migrate. And uh, let's go back. So uh, it suggests uh, us to go to the user model and to add this line passwordless with email to well, let the passwordless module know uh, that we are using this model, the user model for authentication, and we are using it uh, to authenticate by the email uh, attribute. So let's go to our user.rb, and here we are going to add passwordless with email, and we are also going to add these validations. Now, part of these validations, I would also suggest adding validating the format so that uh, the regex of the email uh, does look like an email. I will say also format equals with URI mail to regex email regex. 
Let's have a look at what this uh, looks like in the console. I will start the Rails console right in this regex, and you see this is a regex that you don't have to come up with uh, on your own because it already exists. So this will improve the email validation. And let's continue. So we will need to add the passwordless routes for our users. I will go to our routes.rb and uh, I guess on the top I will add this passwordless for users. Let's have a look at the routes that have been generated. I will start the server and go to localhost rails info routes. And here on the very bottom, we have this routes for passwordless engine. So it has created four new routes. The sign out, the sign in, uh, the submission of the form, and uh, the submission of uh, the token sign in path. Okay, now let's uh, continue. So also in the application controller, we're going to add the uh, passwordless. Let's go to our application controller and here we're going to add a couple of methods so uh, the first method the helper method current user this one is going to find our current user by the session and the second method require user will be used to ensure that only an authenticating user can uh, go to the new action to the edit action create update and destroy the post so only authenticated users will be able to like uh, do actions with posts, but uh, uh, unauthenticated users will be able to see posts, only see posts. So, okay, let's see what else we have in this uh, uh, readme. Nothing uh, important at this moment, I guess. Let's already try using this passwordless authentication. I will, uh, I'll maybe restart the server and go to our application. Okay, so I want to sign in somehow. Uh, how can I sign in? Let's have a look at the roots. So it would be slash sign in. Okay, no root matches sign in. I will maybe go to users slash sign in. And here is this root. Now, I don't want this root to be slash users. I will make it just a slash sign in. So we also have this in our readme. We would update our roots to be not passwordless for user, but passwordless for users at the bare URL. So let's go back. I will uh, refresh this uh, sign in page and I don't need the slash users anymore. Okay, it looks better. So let us try to sign in. I will input an uh, email address and it says, well, if you we found the email, we'll have sent you an email. Looks good. Let's have a look at the uh, logs. Do we have this email anywhere? So, uh, Actually, no. So, no email has been sent. Let's also ensure that there was no passwordless session created. I will start a new console. So, let's start the new console. Passwordless session count. So, no session has been created. Because uh, we have to explicitly tell passwordless that, that we want to be able to create new users when uh, searching for an email. So, we have to either find or create by the email, not just find, but because by default, passwordless uh, would work as kind of invite only and uh, it wouldn't create new users if they're not found by this email. So, again, in the readme, we would need to find this fetch resource for passwordless and we will say find or create by email. This way, we are actually going to create our users. So, we are going back to our user.rb and we are going to say uh, find or create by the email. Now, we don't need this email duplication because, uh, well, it is the same. So, uh, let's go back. I will try to sign in. I will use the same email. I click send magic link and already we have a different problem. So, missing host to link to. Let's have a look at our console. So here, we went to the mailer, we tried to send a magic link email, and we got an error. The error says that uh, it's missing a host link too. So we didn't manage to process sending an email. Okay, so it already tried to send uh, an email. It is already some progress. Let's have a look in the console. So the first passwordless uh, session has been created. Uh, the token is filtered for security. We see the user agent, the uh, localhost uh, address, user ID one. Okay, so we created a password session and we've also actually like think created a user. So user.first. Yeah, the user with this email has been created. 
Okay, so we need to now set up sending emails in our development environment. So I will go to development.rb and here I will need to add uh, a few lines. So I will say uh, config.action mailer dot default URL options equals host will be localhost and port will be 3000. And I'll need to add a few additional params. So action mailer delivery method, let's say SMTP and uh, perform deliveries. Let's say perform deliveries equals, let's say false. And we will say uh, raise delivery errors to true. Okay, so uh, let's see if uh, this actually works. Let's say bin dev. We are starting the server because we have changed something in our environment settings. I will click send magic link. And did anything happen? Yeah, so an email has been sent and we don't have kind of an error in the console. But you see this form hasn't updated. We didn't go to the like successful submission page. So there is still a problem to solve. But here we have our magic link. So let's try and use this magic link. So I will just well, click this magic link. I will copy it and add it to my browser. And uh, did anything happen? I don't know. We might be logged in, we might not be logged in. Let's see if we have a current user. Let's go to our application.html and try to find the current user. Let's say uh, equals current user. Okay. Uh, dot email. So yes, we are actually authenticated. There is a current user. Looks good. So let's add some uh, code to be able to uh, log out. So uh, we have our current user email and we'll say link to and we will add some kind of logout path. Uh, what is the root for logging out? Let's see. It is sign out path. So we would say uh, uh, sign out and uh, I think it will be auth dot sign out path. And uh, we would actually need to make it not a link to but a button. And we would say method would be delete. Let's see if it works. I'm going back. Uh, okay, it's some kind of syntax error. Yeah, we missed a comma. So uh, it would, it's not sign up, but uh, sign out. Okay, let's try clicking sign out and no method current user email. So we did manage to sign out. Let's update these links. Let's say uh, if current user dot present, then we're going to show the email and the sign out link. Let's see. Okay, it works. So now we'll also need to show a link to sign in if there is no current user. So we'll add an else statement. So else and we will have a link to equals link to sign in and it will be auth dot to sign in path. Now we need this auth to specify that we are using passwordless for these uh, URLs. So okay, we have the sign in and it kind of works. So we've added our basic uh, user sended navigation and uh, now we need to fix this problem. You see, I will input an email and this form doesn't uh, redirect. So I kind of uh, submit, but it doesn't redirect because we need to make Turbo work correctly with this gem. So I will need to generate the views and uh, let's see how we can do it. So we will say Rails generate passwordless views. And uh, there are actually really few views. So in device, I know there are like 20 views, I guess. And here we have only three templates. Let's have a look at these templates. So uh, I'm going to passwordless in our views and we have our mailer. So this is the text of our mailer. We can customize it the way we want. We can add the session details, for example. I will say add session dot attributes. Then we have our sessions new and sessions create. I don't know why this was uh, not created in the sessions folder. In my case, I will uh, I will move it to the correct folder now. So the create action is going to the sessions folder. Okay. And what do we have here? So here we have uh, 
uh, a text that uh, I have successfully uh, submitted the form. And here is the form itself. So uh, for my comfort, I will update it from form for to form with model session. Here's the URL and we'll importantly say data uh, turbo false. Okay, and we can also add some additional uh, uh, front-end validation for our email field to require the email before submitting the form because uh, I think if uh, we don't require the email in this form, let's try to submit it. Um, yeah, so we can actually submit the form without an email and it should not kind of uh, be possible. So let's say require, uh, require do true. Okay. Now I cannot submit the form without having an email, so it looks better. And let me now try to submit the form. So I will take one of these emails, click submit, and you see now as I have disabled Turbo on this form, it does correctly redirect me to the next page. So it looks quite well. We have uh, updated this form and let's actually have a look at the email. So here is the email and you see we've also added the session data. Now you don't want to send all this kind of session data in the email, but you might want to add something. So uh, here we have our session user agent, uh, the time the token was created. So uh, we can say something like you might have tried to log in from this device and we will have the session user agent and regards your app team so this way would, would uh, say that like there was a login from a, some kind of specific device let's uh, try this email once again here is the email so here's the link and here's you might have tried to log in from this device and the information about this device okay looks good now it is kind of uh, not really nice to look at our emails in our console we want a better way to preview our emails so um, a good way to develop emails in a development environment would be with a gem uh, letter opener yeah this one so here's the gem and let's add this gem to our application. So I'm going to our gem file, development group, and here I will add the gem letter opener. Now I'm running the bundle. And to make letter opener work, I'm going to say delivery method lab the opener in our development environment, so not SMTP, and perform deliveries true, like this. Now let me start the server once again, so I will restart it, bin dev. And let me once again try uh, signing in. So here I will try to send a magic link. And you see, in a new tab, it actually opened the email. So here we can have a good preview of what our emails look like. And uh, we can click the magic link without going to our console. So I click the magic link and you see I am signed in. Okay, now let's actually work on uh, some uh, authorization. So only users that are logged in can go to create a new post. I will now sign out and I will add this action that we've added to our application controller. This one require user to our post controller. So I will say before action require user and only for a few actions. So only let's start with uh, new. Let's see if it works. I'm going back. You see, whenever I click new, it redirects me to the root path. But I can still go to all other paths. So let's require a user for all the actions except uh, index and show. So require user only, let's say, uh, we have uh, new, edit, create, update, and destroy. Okay, now whenever I try to not just view a post but uh, edit it or go to new or to destroy a post, I have to be signed in. So let's try signing in. And now I can access all these actions. So this way you can uh, require a user to be authenticated to access specific actions in your controllers. And uh, I think that's uh, basically it. So. Uh, there isn't really much to it, just you must also remember that you should uh, 
Also enable sending actual real emails in your production environment before going further with this uh, authentication method because uh, uh, if uh, well you only have uh, email sending in your development environment uh, you won't be able to actually authenticate any users except uh, if you see the emails in your console in a production environment so I encourage you to have a look at my other videos where we set up sending emails in production using AWS simple email service. So I guess that's it uh, and see you in the next one.